Welcome to Flashback. We begin this week's flashback in the southwestern part of the country, where tension was at an all-time high following acts of banditry and kidnapping. Violence was recorded in Ibarakba, East local government area of Oyo State. And on Monday, governors of the southwest states rose from a meeting with the Mieti Alakato Breeders Association with a resolve that open grazing, which has been used as a cover by criminals, must end. The police also increased engagement with stakeholders to avoid possible escalation of the situation. This meeting became necessary following expiration of Governor Ruti Miyakiri Delu's directive to register headsmen to vacate forests in South Inundo State. The issue generated reactions from the presidency and different groups. So the tone for the meeting was set to tackle rising cases of kidnapping and other criminal activities in the southwest states. In attendance were four governors from the southwest and two from the northwest. Leaders of the Miyati Alan Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria were also represented. They all agreed that criminal activities under any guise should not be condoned. We have a duty to our people. We have a duty not only to our people, everybody living here in the state. We have a duty to everybody. We are governors. We are elected. Criminal is a criminal, regardless of where it comes from. I think that's what is important. I think what we are looking at is criminals that are masquerading as S men. Here to play politics. We're here to talk to a very serious uh, uh, challenge that we all are faced with. It is our own problem. Communicated properly, some of the tension that has been witnessed in the last one week will have been needless. Media is partner in progress. The world is not waiting for our country. If we continue to cause agitation in our land, misrepresentation of facts, that those people that do not wish the country well wanted to stay a crisis. God's willing, that will not happen. At the end of the meeting, the chairman of the Nigeria Governor's Forum, Governor of Ikita State, Kai Defayemi, read the communique of the meeting to the gathering. It was resolved that night and other aid gracing should be prohibited. This is a national challenge that is not pe peculiar to any ethnic group or region but one that must be addressed by the cooperation and collaboration of all. That the order of the Ondo State Governor was misconstrued and misrepresented by the media. And that he only ordered those occupying the forest reserve in Ondo State illegally to quit, not fool any herdsmen to vacate the state. This is Sabo Abeokuta. This area is dominated by Aousa and Fulani people from the northern parts of the country. The area is cool and most of the inhabitants are busy with their daily activities. Unlike other places in the southwest, where northerners are apprehensive of attacks from their host communities. Ibrahim Azan Azan is the Seriki Awaland. He expressed concerns about happenings in Oyo State, but confirmed that despite the proximity of Ubon State to Oyo, he is not anticipating such attacks due to proper security arrangements and good relationship with the host communities. We have been calling our people that are coming for grazing at the west side, that we don't want any problem, that any planning we catch that his cows enters farmer's farm, destroy. We are to get him arrest, and he has to feed all the destroyed farm. On kidnapping and other forms of insecurity attributed to the Aousa Fulani community in the southwest, the Seriki said the illicit business is carried out by a network of people from all tribes, including people from the southwest. He denied that the Seriki that fled from Igogo in Oyo State is presently taking cover under his watch in Odeda Ogun State. 
we have been hiding that they say the Serki uh, Fulani of Oyo State who was in Ogun State. We said no. They are joined uh, people that join together with including. Well, on Tuesday, President Mohamed Bouari finally bowed to several months of widespread demand for the reorganization of the country's security architecture. Later on that day, the president approved the appointment of new military officers to superintend the nation's armed forces. The former service chiefs were appointed on 13th of July 2015. The newly appointed security chiefs included Major General Leo Irabo, who replaced General Abayomi Oloni Shake as the chief of defense staff. Major General Ibrahim Atahiru took over from Lieutenant General Toko Barote as the new chief of army staff. Rear Admiral Awal Gambu who took over from Vice Admiral Iboki Bas as the chief of naval staff. And Air Vice Marshal Amao replaced Air Marshal Sadiq of Bakar as the new chief of the air staff. That was the first time the service chiefs were replaced since the president's administration took over. The president also appreciated the outgone chiefs for what he described as overwhelming achievements in maintaining peace in the country. However, wish them well in their future endeavors. Also on Tuesday, our correspondent Sifan Isien looked at the profile of the newly appointed service chiefs and what Nigerians are to expect in the coming days. The former military chiefs were appointed on July the 13th, 2015. After completing our initial two years, the president extended their tenure on December the 18th, 2017, for another two years, meant to have elapsed in 2019. The reason, according to a statement by the Minister of Defense at the time, Mansur Dan Ali, was because of the ongoing military operations across the country. All the service chiefs except Lieutenant General Buratai joined the service in 1979 and have spent at least 40 years in service. Their continued stay in office attracted a lot of criticisms due to the worsening security challenges in the country. The appointment of the new military chiefs is coming at a time when the services are overstretched due to engagement in multiple theaters and security operations in all the six geopolitical zones. The secrecy of the Kabir Adamu is a security help. risk management and intelligence expert. He says the new chiefs have to face the security challenges head on and implement strategies. Security challenges affecting Nigeria. Terrorism is at the forefront of this. Then very recently banditry um, came up and then the other several ones like the um, secession threat in the southeast uh, and then of course, other uh, criminal activities that the military has been involved in. So that would be number one, really. He believes the issue bedeviling jointness across the services has to be adequately addressed. The perceived lack of cooperation within the military units, especially the army and the air force, there is a lot of information out there suggesting that there is um, this lack of cooperation between them. And then uh, the issue of welfare, especially for the frontline soldiers. Uh, and then thirdly, the um, confidentiality of military and other security operations. The new chiefs are to be promoted and decorated with their new ranks at the ceremony by the president any moment from now. Their elevation will pave the way for the retirement of their seniors and even their course mates. Well, on Wednesday, President Mohamed Bouar met with the service chiefs to brainstorm on ways to tackling the rising spate of insecurity in the country. And during that meeting, the president asked the new service chiefs to be patriotic and serve the country well. In his words, quote, we're in a state of emergency, be patriotic, serve the country well, as your loyalty is to the country, end quote. The president, while congratulating them, assured of his full support. President Buhari added that, quote, you know the state we wear in 2015, you know the stage we are now and the undertakings we made. We promise to secure the country, revive the economy and fight corruption. None has been easy, but we have certainly made progress." End quote. He also charged the service chiefs to be concerned about the morale of their officers and men. They should be made to feel physically and professionally secure. 
And after the closed door meeting, the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Liu Irabo, uh, disclosed to State House correspondents that they had uh, they have pledged to work for the safety and security of lives and properties across the country. He also assured that they would ensure that a value is added to the lives of citizens. And he dealt in full uh, action that these new service chiefs should have no other commitment but to see the end of this insurgency, mandatory and other things. We are mindful of um, the demands and we can only at this stage pledge to do the utmost best to bring security, safety and security to lives and properties across the country. On behalf of um, the service chiefs, I'm ensuring, ensuring the nation security, peace and security. We believe that um, there will be value that will be added to the dis security disposition of um well, with the rising spate of insecurity, the replacement of the service chiefs by President Mohamed Boy did not come as a surprise to many Nigerians. This followed calls from many quarters for the country's security architecture to be restructured. On Wednesday, TVC News sought the views of residents of Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, about the appointments. The former service chiefs were appointed by President Buhari in 2015 after he was elected to his first presidential term. Since then, the service chiefs have tried all strategies to bring an end to the insecurity bedeviling the nation. But the seeming lack of progress in addressing the security challenge has led to a widespread clamor for their sack. The inability to completely defeat Boko Haram terrorists in the Northeast was a major yardstick used to measure the performance of the former military hierarchy. It will be the same measure with which the new service chiefs will be judged. The Boko Haram insurgency and other forms of criminality have lingered for over a decade in the Northeast region. And so, the new service chiefs will not be venturing into unfamiliar territory. The people of Borno have been the worst hit by the Boko Haram insurgency. The killings of over 67 farmers at Zaburmari village of the state was the height of it for many. Their voices became the loudest among those calling for the replacement of the service chiefs. Burno resident expects the new service chiefs to prioritize the fight against insurgency so as to enable IDPs go back to their places of abode. The service chiefs had been there for long and uh, they have uh, quite okay done their lot because uh, they did well in some of the activities but in some we have cause to raise a lot of concerns. I am sure we are going to have a new dawn. To me, uh, governance is about continuity and uh, we expect them to cash in on the already existing um, success recorded by the outgoing service chief. Very soon you will see that in the war front you will be also there having your cameras, snapping everything and gathering the news and giving it to the people. Mm. I know with Irabo this kind of things will be done. Therefore the era of hiding and uh, what have you has gone. For orders who are resigned, changing the service chiefs does not guarantee better security for the country. My small fear is that I don't know what kind of support they are really going to get from these uh, people that appointed them to the uh, position. Sometimes you can be appointed, uh, given uh, a role to play, but in fact you will find it difficult to make your way. We want them to start uh, to hit the ground running and see an immediate impact on that. And we want them to be as honest as possible to the president, to give him the clear situation of what is happening. All eyes are now in the new service chiefs as the country grapples with nationwide insecurity, banditry and kidnapping. Well, on Thursday, we told you that a fight broke out between members of oil producing communities at the venue of the public hearing on the PIB organized by the House of Representatives. Well, the proceedings were summarily put on hold on the second and last day of the event. It's the second day of this public hearing 
organized by lawmakers to collect inputs from key actors in the oil and gas industry towards a generally acceptable petroleum industry bill. Presentations came in one after the other with the committee chairman firmly in charge. It's already in our program. We are even going to our respecting communities where all of you will also make additional presentations there. Powering local oil companies, ministers, relevant government agencies and the physically challenged took turns bearing their minds on ways to strengthen the bill. That we are taxes are deducted from hydrocarbon uh, revenue is the same thing as encroaching on the federation account. So we expect that the bill should not be to the disadvantage of monthly revenue to the federation account. We have come to present one that you don't change a winning team. Our partnership with Petroleum Equalization Fund have helped this nation tremendously. The schools, the hospitals, and other infrastructure that have been built in Niger Delta do not provide for people with disabilities. Therefore, the BOT must contain people with disabilities from the communities. Honorable Chairman. Having exhausted all the contributors, the committee turned to representatives of host communities for presentations. But discordant tunes among the Niger Delta members degenerated into free for all. Authentic and the original natural chairman, which is High Chief Dr. Benjamin Stite Tamarenabi, JP, is the authentic chairman we have. Just like in the Senate, you see that everything was coordinated. And that is what I was asking the honorable members on the table. Now, why is it that House of Rep cannot coordinate theirself? This forced the committee to compel the host communities to simply adopt their memoranda and leave the stage. But this did not go down well with some of the groups. Host communities and civil society organizations from the Niger Delta region were not allowed to speak. And we consider this an abnormality and we, we simply state that this is not a public hearing. So on Thursday, Nigeria dropped to 149th out of the 180 countries on Transparency International's 2020 Corruption Perception Index. This was the worst ranking received by Africa's largest country in recent times, as it also scored 20 to 100 points. The report considered factors such as absence of transparency in the COVID-19 pandemic response, nepotism in the public service, appointments, lack of adequate anti-corruption legal framework, among others. With an average score of 32, Sub-Saharan Africa is the lowest performing region on the Corruption Perception Index showing little improvement from previous years and underscoring a need for urgent action. According to this latest ranking, Nigeria is now the second most corrupt country in West Africa, with Guinea-Bissau the only country more corrupt than Nigeria in the sub-region. In Africa, only 12 countries are perceived to be more corrupt than Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Chad, Eritrea, Burundi, Congo, Libya, Equatorial Guinea, Sudan, while Somalia and South Sudan are ranked the most corrupt nation on earth. The factors used to aggregate the data were absence of transparency in the COVID-19 response, nepotism in public service appointment, lack of adequate anti-corruption legal framework, prevalence of bribery and extortion, and security sector corruption. So much that was actually expended was actually not found to have been uh, uh, distributed, and the impact of it was not felt on the ground. And that generated quite a lot of concern. Uh, that report suggested that so much money were taken as a result of the response uh, fund and of course school feeding program and they specifically mentioned school feeding program over the lockdown and that is because and that was because so much that was actually expended was actually not found to have been uh, uh, distributed and the impact of it was not felt on the ground and that generated quite a lot of concern. 
It is believed that with necessary legislation in place, it will help address some of the effects responsible for the decline in ranking. The National Assembly is urged to speed up deliberations and passage of relevant anti-corruption laws, and the presidency should assent to these laws as quickly as possible. The process of crime yeah. uh, bill would definitely help us to be able to manage all these assets. Like I said, police, customs, all of them recover assets, yet it stays within their own domain. Rather, it shouldn't be. Audit bill, the process of crime bill, all those are anti-corruption agencies. The whistleblower policy, it's a policy, right? It's not yet a law. What are we doing as the executive to ensure that? To reduce corruption and better respond to future crises, Transparency International recommends that government must strengthen oversight institutions, ensure open and transparent contracting, promote civic space, and publish relevant data and guarantee access to information. And on Friday, the newly appointed military chiefs assumed office. From the Chief of Defence Staff, the Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff and the Chief of the Air Staff, the pledge was the same, to be loyal to the Constitution. The Nigerian Army on Thursday took the lead in the handing and taking over ceremonies. And on Friday, the other services followed suit. And I also consider myself lucky. At the Nigerian Air Force headquarters, the outgoing chief of the air staff recounts his journey in the service and highlights the achievement under his leadership. In the Northeast alone, we have been able to generate over 37,000 flying hours. And we have also, uh, having restructured the Air Force, brought in quite a number of personnel into the system. The chief comes in amid high expectations. Since the Nigerian Air Force is a continuum and our mission remains the same, we rest assured sir, that we will work assiduously to consolidate on the already made gains while charting a new course to take the Nigerian Air Force to the next and higher pride of place. The attention soon shifts to the naval headquarters. Although the country has witnessed new security challenges elsewhere. The unsavory state of affairs in the maritime domain depicted earlier has been significantly narrowed. They must be recognized as social problems, and so with the benefit of other complementary remedies, would continue to face decline until obliteration. I am particularly delighted that the leadership of the Nigerian Navy has fallen on me as the next chief of the naval staff. At the defense headquarters, a similar ceremony holds. General Gabriel Olonishaki hands over as the 16th chief of defense staff. Today is therefore a great day of joy for me and my family, having had the rare and unique privilege to have been in the military for 48 years. The incoming Chief of Defence Staff, Major General Irabo, was the Chief of Defence Training and Operations at the Defence Headquarters. After now, the service chiefs will be meeting with me in my office for us to address a few issues. That the strides that were made... He comes in with experience in counterinsurgency, having served as a theatre commander of Operation Lafayette Dole, as well as a force commander of the multinational joint tax force in the Lake Basin area. 